guys. I'm Holly Tempest. Hello. I'm Neko Rin. Hello. And this is how to host a photo shoot. All right, so with photo shoots, there are some things you gotta know. It's not just show up, take pictures, and look adorable. So we're gonna go over some basics today that you're gonna wanna remember as much as possible. Those basics are going to be the essence of planning, time, safety, photographers, and theme. Let's start with planning. The first thing you wanna know about running a photo shoot is you need to plan ahead. You can't just the day before show up and be like, I wanna do this. It's not gonna end well for you. You're gonna get some pretty crappy photos. I've seen people do it. I've seen it where last minute the host doesn't show up and somebody else is now trying to figure it out. It's a bad situation all the way around. Um, you also wanna try and write things down. Have a notebook with you. Write down your notes. You need a big notebook, use a big notebook. You need little cards. Whatever works, just make sure you have it in your mind. Unless you're Spencer Reed from Freaking Criminal Minds and can remember everything, write it down. <laughs> and you can't always rely on finding ball shots of yourself either. Yeah, no. Um, check out your photo area beforehand. So I not only do uh, convention photo shoots, I also work with the Philadelphia Cosplay Association and they do photo shoots for the general public, cosplayers, and events outside of conventions. So with that, you need to know your area. Like we have an event coming up this weekend actually, which I'm not at sadly, um, in a graveyard. And we had to go and scope it out, we had to talk to them beforehand. And even here at conventions, they will usually have a set area for you to take your photo shoots at. At this con, it's what? Photo shoot one, two, three, something like that? Something like that. I know there's the age. Yeah. So the day before, day zero, just give a walk around. Check out some spots. And if you have a personal photo shoot, just go walk around. See what you can find. Because you might be walking down the street, and there's this little tiny park in the corner. And it's like, oh my god, my character would look awesome right there. Yep. So some key things to remember is time. Timing is incredibly important with photo shoots, especially if you're the host. Um, being on time is being late, and being late is a bad thing. If you're going to be the host, you need to plan to show up at least 15 minutes before everyone else. You need to make sure that if it's a public shoot and you're holding an event outside of a convention, you want to show up 30 minutes before everyone else, make sure there's nothing wrong with the area. Scope it out, make sure you'll be able to do it. If you're doing it at a convention, typically conventions will ask you to show up about five minutes beforehand, uh, but that might not give you enough time to set up. I know when I'm doing convention photo shoots, I have to show up about 15 minutes early, talk with the photographer, I'll stand with them, and we will look at the room, look at, look at the room, here. Look at the room and we'll plan out where people can stand. And I know timing is a big thing for you guys in photography too, right? Yeah, so um, I, as a cosplayer who has done my own shoots and as a photographer, I have had photographers and cosplayers alike. Like we book a shoot for let's say two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I get there around 1.45, 15 minutes before the shoot starts, and the cosplayer or the photographer, depending on which I'm doing, has shown up 15 minutes after the shoot was supposed to start. Like, I've been there for half an hour, staying at the same spot. Like, oh, I'm in the dealer's hall, or oh, um, I'm finishing this photo shoot running late. You will hear almost every excuse in the book for why someone is running late. Late is bad, especially if you're working with a convention. I know when we do photo shoots at Oticon, um, because I handle Oticon Disney, that they require me to be there ahead of time. And if I'm late, they will start it. Somebody from the staffers or they'll take someone from the crowd who doesn't know the setup, doesn't know the people. That's a pretty 
close-knit group. We all know each other really well. We've been doing it for years. And they will just pick some random person, and it'll go downhill fast, especially trying to regain control of it, showing up late. If they've already decided to start, you're not likely to get it back under control and to figure out what's going on. Okay, this is a big one. Absolutely hugest one. First off, shout out to my friend, Lady Ivory. This photo was taken by Nora Wren Cosplay and Photography. But, more importantly, look how pretty she is. Yeah, just because she's pretty, you can't touch her. Cosplay's not consent, guys. So safety's a big thing. We'll start with the most important one. Cosplay's not consent. That means you can't touch someone, you can't make someone feel bad, you can't do anything without first talking to someone. Let's say you want to take some shippy photos. You have Baggy and Charlie together, and these two people don't know each other at all, but it would be an absolutely adorable photo. And Charlie comes to you and she's all like, hey, I want to hug Baggy in this way, and the appropriate response is, well, let's talk to Baggy. And you'll go over and be like, hey, you're cosplaying this, she's cosplaying that, this is her idea. And if the two parties agree and no laws are being broken, do it. However, if somebody says, I'm not comfortable with you touching me in such a way, you let it go. I remember it was probably about three years ago, I was running Otakon Disney and there was a gentleman who showed up to our photo shoot and what we didn't know at the time, because it was a huge group of about 80 people, is that he was standing in the back of our bigger lineups grabbing the girls from behind. So they walked up to me after the shoot and told me what had happened, and I'm like, well, you guys should have told me while it was happening. That's why I have security here. Um, but I also ran Oticon Disney the next day. Same gentleman shows up. I very quickly grabbed one of our members of security, and we walked over and explained the situation of, yo, you had four different girls accuse you of grabbing them, you're not taking part in this event. You need to leave. And if you don't want to leave, you will be leaving the convention. And security walked him away. But that's the type of thing as a host that you need to do. You need to be aware of the situations, you need to talk to your cosplayers, and you need to know if something's going wrong so you can stop it. Not everyone's going to want to walk up and talk to you if they've been offended in some way or harassed in some way. They might be embarrassed and message you after the fact. You want to try and ask them to get details. You want to remember who they're talking about. So if you come across the person again, you can act quickly or know to watch for the behavior. The other thing is, don't push your limits. Not everyone is the most physically fit person on the planet. And you might have a really cool photo idea and they might say, yeah, let's do it. But as the hostess, if you realize the person's in danger of hurting themselves, you need to be able to step in and be like, hey guys, this looks like it might be getting dangerous. Let's try something else. Not everyone can do a JoJo pose. Not everyone can do JoJo poses. So, when, all right. <clears throat> so, in photography, there's the really great and there's the not so great. Uh, an example being, uh, besides, I'm not plugging myself. Plug away. I'm not plugging myself. Um, but a good example, uh, one of my friends is uh, with an H photography. Great work. And then you have some photographers who they charge what professionals are charging and you get, oh, I kind of just play with this filter on Instagram. So you got you to know who you're working with. Like, before you book a photographer, make sure you look at their work, you look at their portfolio, like, whatever they can send you. Say, just reach out and be like, hey, um, you don't have any social, like, any new posts or whatever. You don't have any problems I can look at. Um, can you send some pictures you've done? Uh, and then <laughs> so, from the hostess perspective, um, if you want to go the extra mile for your, your photo shoots, if you're a big group photo shoot hostess like I am, um, you're going to want to try and look around and see if you can get a good deal. Sometimes, what I've learned over the years is you can usually find people who are trying to 
trying to build their portfolio and will work with large groups because it's a lot of content that they can use. And they will give you either decent pricing, great pricing, or they will come up with some trade-off, like you get to use the prints for free. But from the cosplay side, you just want to always do reviews, and not everyone is going to be fantastic to start. Some of my best friends, hi, I actually met through reviewing photographers and this person being like, I'm trying to build my portfolio, does anyone want to work with me? <laughs> Basically, and now I'm stuck with you. I'm fantastic, don't make me think. But yeah, so you, you want to do that. And then the same thing with photographers is if you're doing a big group shoot, this goes back to planning, they need space to move around. I remember a month ago at Oticon, actually, we were doing Harry Potter. And the photographers we had, we had two of them join us. They were fantastic. They wanted action shots. And we actually had a pretty decent area. It's probably about the size of this room. And we were able to stage like full Battle of Hogwarts poses and they were able to run in between people. So you wanna be able to look at your photographer and go tell me what you need. Do you want a static shot across the board? You want everyone lined up on the horizon or do you want me to pose them in a specific area? How is the lighting? Always have communication between the hostess and the photographer. Not all hostess are going to know photography. I don't know shit about photography. That's what you got me for. That's what I hired him for. And if you want to get into cosplay photography, you do, you'd be like, hey, do you have any group shoots that you want me to do? You need to be very loud. Incredibly loud. Yeah, you need, and you need to have crowd management skills a little bit. You need to be willing to tell somebody they've stepped out of line. Or just, hey, we're all friends here pretty couple times. We're all friends here, squeeze in. So this is again from the hostess standpoint. A lot of photographers will have contracts. Now if you're doing a public event outside of convention, they might ask you to fill out a form that is a time for print agreement where the photographer owns the rights to the print and you are paying to use those prints by offering them your time. Usually photographers will do this scenario when they're building a portfolio. This is one of those situations where you're gonna find somebody who's doing it for a discounted price or doing it for free. And those opportunities can be huge for you and huge for them, but read on the dotted line because there are some shady people out there that will try to take your likeness and use it for themselves and tell you you're never allowed to repost this photo anywhere. You can hang it on your wall, but that's it. You don't want to agree to a contract like that at all. You want it to be equal, like fair. So if they own the rights to it, but make sure you have the right to repost it, provided you give them credit, be like, hey, I did this photo shoot, this was taken by Echo Ren, and he's at this, give a link. If you do that, most photographers will let you then repost the photo somewhere because it's free advertising for them and they love that. Yeah, we, we do love uh, when you tag us and stuff. Um, so, a little bit differently though, with con settings, you're not gonna find uh, those situations where there's contracts because with a con setting, it is a bunch of strangers showing up to an area and taking photos. You as the hostess may have agreed to something, but reading over the contract beforehand, making sure that once you get the prints, that those people who have no idea what's going on can then use them. So it was what? Uh, Oticon? 2019. 2019. You did Disney? I did all your photo shoots. I did Disney, I did Star Wars. Yes, so what we did there is he has unlimited advertising from me. Um, he got to hand his business cards out to the whole event, but then those photos were then reposted to Facebook for people to take and use, and that is kind of off in La La Land, and we hope people credit him. However, there is the expectation that he's not going to always be credited for those photos he took. The last and probably one of the most important things with photography is minors. 
just because somebody shows up to your photo shoot does not mean they are of age. If you're holding a public event, uh, you need parents' consent. A 16-year-old, a 12-year-old cannot show up to your event and just be like, hey, I want my picture taken. Nah, doesn't work. With the way the internet is today, mommy and daddy's got to sign on the dotted line for them to be there. At a con event, it's a little bit harder to do that. One, you're not always going to know the ages of the people showing up. Two, you would hope the parents are there so they can just give their consent by being there. But you also kind of have to think about the fact that you may not know that this 12-year-old showed up. I remember it was 2014, uh, we were doing My Little Pony, and the photographer was just taking photos. Out of nowhere, these two little girls just run into the shop and then run away. Now, it was a staged photo because we had um, another group come over to join us so we could do a Hasbro crossover. And we couldn't necessarily edit the girls out of the photo, so it ended up did getting posted online. We did try to like blur out their faces as much as we could, but in that situation, we had a photo that we didn't realize at a time that they had run up behind us. It got posted. So in con events, you're not always going to be able to manage it. You're just gonna to wanna to manage it as best you can. You wanna think about it ahead of time. That's why you also wanna try and keep public con events as PG-13 as possible. No heavy cuteness that may or may not go over well. Because again, you have strangers who may not know each other and things get weird fast if you're not careful. And you can't curse like a sailor. Unless you're me. <laughs> So, this is the thing people forget the most, is theme. So, what we mean by theme is you're going to have a specific group. In the case of something like Disney. Disney owns 90% of the world. Do you know how much stuff shows up to Disney that I didn't know was Disney? Stuff from Fox. I had a news anchor show up to Disney and Fox is owned by them, so I had to allow it. But that, that's the point. You need to know this ahead of time as the hostess. You need to be able to be like, okay, my theme is going to be uh, My Little Pony. That's My Little Pony, gens one through five, gens through one through six, whatever we're at at that point. Um, unless you're specific. So with Otacon, one of the big things that we have is there is the Disney photo shoot. And the Disney photo shoot from the way I is it's everything Disney. If Disney owns you in any way, shape, or form, show up, we will make it work. There was another hostess who did not do that the same way, and it has caused some issues, because people will show up and be like, well, Star Wars is Disney. So if you want a specific type of theme, you need to say that. If you want Disney Princess, you put Disney Princess. If you want just Star Wars, you put just Star Wars. If you can narrow down your theme to what you have in mind and what you're seeing, then you will have a much easier time of controlling your photo shoots. Another thing with theme is you want to think about the area you're in. If you're doing a has been hotel photo shoot, uh, like with my, my cosplay Philadelphia group, they're in a graveyard this weekend. That is a perfect theme. That goes hand in hand. You can have Demon Charlie in a graveyard and it would be perfectly fine. But then you also have those situations where you have complete weirdness going on. And if it's admirable for the character, the photo might look off. So you're not going to find someone completely soaked in blood uh, just sitting in a candy factory. Actually, you might with some of these horror movies anymore. Yeah. I can see Jason. Factory. Jason Morpheus in a candy factory? I, I get it. I think it'd be funny. I think we just planned the uh, new Friday the 13th. Probably. But that is what you need to think about. Themes are hugely important and it's a big thing people forget. People just show up and be like, I want to do photos of this. But then they have 12 other things show up that they weren't accounting for. And that can really affect your timing. Timing in there? Well, let's go over timing real quick because apparently I forgot to add the slide. Way so to go. Shouldn't drink the night before con. We did. I know. So, 
here's the thing with, with timing. The, we're actually going to practice this. Come on, Echo. Do I have to? Yes. So here's the thing. Um, is this working? Okay. Here's the thing with the, here's the thing with photo shoots. Timing is hugely important because when you're posing, your photographer, your photographer will need time to actually snap the photo. So if I'm posing like such, I have to know how long to hold this pose for. As the hostess, you are going to be standing to the sideline, usually watching, and you'll need to watch both the photographer to watch as he's taking the photos and also the models. Because the models, they're gonna be holding poses. If you have people constantly changing pose every five seconds, photos are gonna blur. It's gonna look horrible really quickly. So you need to be able to be like, okay, everyone, next pose. Hold, five, four, three, two, one, change pose. That's the type of voice and type of timing you need to have. You need to be able to tell the models they need to hold their pose and how long to hold it for. If it is a particularly difficult pose, try and work with them on how long they can actually hold it for. If it's a really simple pose, try and make sure the photographer has time to get everything. Yeah. And like, also think about how long it takes for them to get into the pose if it's a rather difficult pose. Right, so with timing, that's what you need to right. think about. So, it takes a while to get to that. Right, you mean like, I can't do this well anymore. So I'm in heels for this. So, who has questions? Hey, do you? Do not ask about birdhouses. I will throw you out. You work for me. Remember that. You'll get fired again. So, you know, for a photographer, like, what would separate somebody that's like, oh, well, I bought a camera. That makes me a photographer. What would that set apart from somebody that might, you know, be experienced such as yourself in the field? Experience. That's exactly. It's, it's experience. Like, anyone can pick up a camera and just start taking pictures and I'm a photographer. But if you really want to be a photographer, you need to, like, start working with people. You need to network. And, like, even if you're not, like, taking photos of people, Take photo shoots of just like random things, like go, objects. Yeah, do that. Um, or like flowers, we like those. That's a good example because a lot of people do that. But if you really want to be a photographer, you need to network, you need to invest in yourself. Invest in good equipment, too. But you need to invest in yourself and like start working with different editing softwares. Like if you can't, um, like if you can't afford the Adobe Suite, um, DIMP is a great alternative for Photoshop and stuff like that. So, like, and I remember seeing a couple pictures before Pond was like, you can't afford Adobe, here are some free alternatives. Alternatives are fantastic. Yeah. Um, me personally, I prefer using Photoshop and Lightroom, but that's just because that's what I learned on. What are some red flags for when you're looking for a photographer? Red flags for a photographer. Okay, uh, I'm going to handle this from the model side and then you can answer from the photographer side. So the first red flag that I usually see is they will have nothing posted, either no photos of any kind or no cosplay photos. If you want a photographer, you want somebody that's experienced with your type of photos, somebody taking pictures of the landscapes, may not know how to do a close-up to make you look absolutely fantastic in your wig because it's on point that day. I, I will say this. I have worked with a photographer, um, KatsuCon 2018, and she had never done a cosplay photo shoot before, but she was a wedding photographer, so she knows how to pose people. So that, that still counts. I'm talking about the people that literally just sit on a beach and take pictures of the ocean. So they, they do it to post. Yes. Gotcha. So that's going to be the first red flag. Actually check what they do. Uh, another red flag is you're going to want to actually Google the person's name. Either Google their personal name if you can get it or their company name. If you're in the cosplay community, 
We are an incredibly small community, especially here in Pennsylvania and on the East Coast in general. Even we, as big as these conventions are. Yes. If you've been to Otacon, you've probably seen or worked with me at some point. Most of us have. We all really know each other. And that con has 35,000 people. So chances are we talk. We all talk, we all gossip. If something goes wrong, it is quick to call the person out. And that's what you want to do. They're not going to be upfront about that. You're going to have to go searching for it. And you might find a post from 2015 of, hey, this guy grabbed me and did this. Now, if you only find one person complaining, it very well could possibly just be a client dispute, which is something you have to take into consideration. But if you find three, four, five people saying, X cosplayer did such and such, chances are something's wrong. You should also just give a general look over things. If their experience or their professional at all, and they want to actually be in this community, they will have some form of something to say, hey, this, this is my business model. If they've got nothing, they're either just starting up, or it could be something else. Um, unfortunately, in today's day, day and age, we have people who are not so nice, and they will prey on the vulnerability of others to scam them out of money, uh, time, and other not so nice things that we're not going to bring up, but you should all be aware of. That's probably one of the biggest problems, though, is being scammed for money. Um, with photographers, going back to the contract point, um, most photographers will tell you, you will have your photos within X amount of time. They give you a return. I give my photographers usually about 30 days. That's usually a pretty good time for you guys to do your turnaround, right? Yeah, and depend it also depends on, like, say you personally know the photographer. Um, say they have their weekends completely booked from 8 a.m. till 2 o'clock. It's going to take them a while to get your photos back, depending on when you shoot. Was. Like, if your shoot was his their last shoot on Sunday, you're not going to see it for like two months, maybe. But depending, like for example, with me, I try to get them back within two to four weeks. That's that's about pretty standard in, in our community, um, photographers. And they'll be honest with you. They'll be like, I've got X amount of clients. This is the estimated turnaround time. If you don't hear from the photographer at all, like at all after the photo shoot, that's a red flag. Because if something comes up with my photos, let's say you got stuck at work, there's been an emergency, something happened, typically the photographer will message you and be like, hey, I had a family emergency, I've stopped work temporarily, this is the reason why, uh, please forgive me, and this is your new expected return time. Now, if you message the photographer like, hey, what's going on, and they straight up ignore you, that's a problem, especially if you pay. That is a huge issue in our community um, of people claiming to be photographers, booking shoots, taking a whole bunch of photos, taking your money, and then you never hear from them again. You might, two, three months down the road, find your photos online, but this person's now been using your likeness without any consent from you. And when you do pay for a photo, you are paying to at least a portion of the rights, right? You, so... How it usually works if you the photographer gets it and say they give you all the photos that you from the shoot, whether you like them or not, like they're just expecting you to tag them. So they want credit for their work. They don't want you to be like, hey, have these photos, don't tag them. They want, hey, you can use these photos as much as you want, just credit random photography. Page. So that, that's also a huge red flag. Now, you might have, and I, I've seen this uh, personally with someone that I used to know. She did this. Thankfully, she's no longer a member of our community. She would book photographers, have the photos taken, get the photos back, and then nitpick the hell out of them. She'd complain, this is done wrong. You didn't blur this. You didn't do that. You didn't do that. I want my money back. And she would try and withhold payment from them until she got the photos, which as a hostess, you may come across that where if you're working with a private group of people not willing to pay until they get the product, sometimes photographers aren't always on board with that, and that's not really something you should do. I mean, you're paying them for their time, so 
you really should pay ahead of time. Um, I'm going to say, uh, as, from a photographer's standpoint, one red flag that always sticks out to me is, I had this happen at KatsuCon last year. Um, this one girl was like, hey, can I get a free photo shoot? Like, I'm super quick, my, she was like saying like, oh, I'm super quick with my poses, I'm a model, I do like this, this, and that. And, uh, like, the red flag for, as a photographer who's taking bookings is cosplayers who are trying to get a free photo shoot. It happens all the time. Yep, now, I am in service to you, so you get free photo shoots for life. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. Yes, now, once you get better in the community and get more well-known, you'll start networking and making friends. I know you touched on the networking earlier. Um, I have two photographers I work very closely with. Mr. Neko Rin here, and then my friend, Nora Ray Cosplays. And they give me either discounts, free photo shoots, but this is because I built a working relation with them over several years. I didn't just message them one day and be like, I want this for free. We've had a business relationship for so many years that we've become friends and when you have friends like that your friends will help you out you want to build to a point where you have the same consistent photographers that you know you can count on now it's always good to branch out it's always good to give new people a chance but as a hostess if you're relying on people to do work consistently you're going to want to narrow your points down and review people to who you can trust Any other questions? I have another question. It better not be about a birdhouse. No, no, no. I, it's pretty much for both, like, you know, for the hostess perspective and, like, the photographer's perspective. Okay. What would you say would be probably, like, the most challenging cosplay or, like, setting or anything like that that you had to take or manage? Disney. <laughs> um, so the most challenging group was... Um, 20, 2019 here, uh, it was the Animal Crossing photo shoot because they wanted to do it in the lobby. The lobby's really crowded. I remember that photo shoot. It went to shit real quick. Yes, it did, especially because, like, and pre pretty much another photographer came in halfway through and just pretty much took over the entire shoot for, like, five minutes. Like, like I couldn't get my... I couldn't get my position to do pose for to guide everyone for poses, and I didn't. They no one was listening, so I'm like, "What do I do?" I was actually at that photo shoot. I remember that. Um, the mistake that that hostess made. Um, so when you're you're hosting public convention photo shoots like that, you're gonna have people come up. You're going to have people join in that you didn't account for. You're going to have photographers show up that you didn't pay to be there because they just want pictures of the costumes, which is cool. However, your priority as the host will always be to make sure the person you paid to be there has the optimal spot. Now you can be like, Neko, did you get your photos? Yeah, I got a couple. Great, can you side that for me for two seconds? Sure. That is the appropriate way to go about making sure everyone gets that specific action shot, that specific pose. Or if, angle. Yes. If that is what they want, they need to communicate with you. It is not okay to just go and take over and push the person that's paid to be there out of the way. Yep. So, again, this goes with your spacing as well. Um, you got to make sure that uh, if this is going with a bad space, say it's a 30 person group, it's in a postage stamp of a room. Um, so back to the challenging question. No, honestly, from a host's perspective, my most challenging group that I have to work with is probably Disney because on any given week at doing Disney, I can have as little as four people show up to 120. Uh, it was probably three years ago, Oticon 2018. They put us in the worst possible spot. We had put down that we were expecting an attendance of about 80 people. We were put in this corner that couldn't accommodate 80 people, but 
we had close to 120 show up and it got to a point where I wasn't able to manage the crowd and neither was my security team that was assigned to work with me that day because there were too many people. Um, big, big groups like that are always a huge task and if you're not an experienced hostess, you're gonna wanna bring on somebody that either has a little bit more experience than you or that you wanna work with. If there's two of you doing it, it's a little bit easier. But when you're dealing with big groups breaking into the, the double digits, you're gonna wanna follow the basic steps of planning theme time and all of that. You guys don't have to leave, you can be friends with us. I'm gonna be right back, we're gonna get you a water. Okay. Any other questions? I have another question. No bird hog. <laughs> no promises, but uh, so I feel like with the with this cosplay community for both hostess and photographers, it seems like the most important thing is your reputation. How would you handle like a serious accusation made against you, especially if it wasn't like like not in good faith at all against you? Why do you look at me like that? <laughs> Well, from the hostess perspective, whenever I'm working events like this, whenever I'm doing photo shoots, whenever I'm in cosplay, what I try to remember is if I'm in cosplay, I have to be as close to the character as possible. But I also have to be mindful of everything around me. I have to watch every word I say, everything I do. I mean, I start drinking, I tend to be like, yeah, you can go F yourself in the corner, you piss me off. I've got a temper. I'll freely admit that. But I've never actually had an accusation against me because I know that about myself. I know that I have negative qualities that may reflect bad, badly on my brand, and that's at the forefront of my mind when I'm working. As far as I'm concerned, when I'm doing this, this is a second job. I have to maintain a customer service appearance as much as possible that would be on par with if I was at my day job. My customer service voice. Hi, how can I help you? Um, I, and then on the reputation note, um, if someone tries slandering your name, you have to realize that, hey, not everyone's gonna, like say they make a post about you, like just dragging your name through the mud about it. No, not everyone is gonna see it, but say someone, one of your friends does. And they decide not to listen to your side of the story. Right. Um, let's say they, your friend decides not to listen to your side of the story, or they decide to, but they're like, oh, well, you're wrong. Like, most you can really do once people start slandering is try to fight to clear your name, but also if people aren't willing to listen to you, don't give them the time of day. And if something does happen, one of the things you need to remember is you will have friends who will take your back. If you truly did not do anything absolutely horrendous or wrong. Now, if you actually did it, first step should be making amends and apologizing and realize you're probably probably not, not going to recover from this. Probably not. You're, you're going to get Joe's uh, exotic on that one. But... <laughs> <laughs> um... But your friends, that's why networking is so important because if you have a large group of people who know you and something happens, they'll be like, this has never happened. In our community, we tend to listen to each other. We are a closed-knit community. We know that the normies aren't always that nice to us and they may have misunderstandings with us. Our friends will be there to back us up. And I'm not just saying this because I'm Charlie. I'm saying this because it's true. Friendship is magic. And you touched on Norbies. They're really, they can get bad. Oh, yeah. Um, it was actually just yesterday. I was walking around in Charlie. Uh, I got in the elevator, and this, this Normie gentleman decided that even though I was on the other side of the gen uh, elevator, he needed to pick his kid up because he, quote, didn't want all the weirders walking around him. Situations like that, you just kind of have to ignore. If you know you did nothing wrong, and you know for a fact that 
it's not a big issue when somebody's just saying, I don't like person because they said this, or I don't like person because I think this, the post will eventually go away. Yeah, someone can search it, and in five, ten years, it can pop up again. But if you really did nothing wrong, A, just apologize to them if they really feel offended. If not, just be like, I'm sorry you feel that way, but not my problem, unless you actually did it. Or let it go. The worst thing you can do is engage the person who is slandering you in a negative way, because then you may do something you're going to regret. Anger is very quick to get you into trouble, where if you take a step back and be like, I'm not engaging, I'm just going to step back from this, we're not talking about this, and then maybe revisit the person two, three months down the road and be like, hey, you hurt my feelings doing this. Can we talk about it in a calm, rational manner? Because now they'll be calm, hopefully, and you may also be calm. Do not react to things in anger. That is when you're going to actually mess up. That's how hands get thrown. That is definitely how hands get thrown. All right, I think we got time for one more question. I have one last question. It better not be about bird houses. Uh, okay, but uh, so I know earlier we mentioned about great ways for upcoming photographers, you know, to gain experience and pretty much build themselves a portfolio. Portfolio. How would you recommend somebody that wants to get into hosting, like how to start, like you know, to get experience and try to build up their own like career from your perspective? So back in 2011, uh, a friend of mine bought me a ticket to Oticon. And I want to go as Twilight Sparkle, which should come as a surprise. Um, so I, there was a My Little Pony photo shoot that weekend, and I showed up, and the hostess didn't. So me and another Twilight were like, I guess we're gonna figure this out. Now, thankfully, this wasn't a like official shoot. This was just kind of a small thing. But we looked up a bunch of like videos real quick on how people do this and we just kind of emulated what we saw and I had to like figure it out on the spot but after that I really liked what I did and a lot of people were happy they really enjoyed how it turned out and it went well so I then started researching it and I started learning about the different fandoms particularly the ones I was interested in and I just started going to them or I would message somebody who is hosting it and be like hey I'm trying to learn to do this can I help you out in any way from there, once I was confident in my own skills that I'd learned what I needed to to do it successfully, I started applying to conventions. And I'm like, I want to have a photo shoot with your cosplay coordination for this fandom. And I'm going to say this, my first couple probably sucked because I was incredibly inexperienced. But every time I did it, I learned something new and I got better. And the only thing you can really do is just keep learning, just keep doing it, and eventually, you're going to understand the ins and outs of it, and you'll get to that point. You can't, can't get to your 100th photo shoot if you never do one. So, yeah, um, start as a team. Start out just going to the fandoms you like, talking with people. That networking is so super important because the hostess that we already have in our community always want help. We are severely overworked by some of these photo shoots. We love it when somebody steps in and gives us a break on our voice. Like a loud photographer. Yes. Um, anyone have any other questions? I do, people. You guys have any questions about photo shoots? I don't know what a photo shoot is. Well, that's a question. That is a fantastic question. What is a photo shoot? So. I see Inuasha, that's a huge fandom right there. A photo shoot is when a group of people get together from a particular fandom, group, or theme, and they get photos taken, usually by a professional or maybe a friend, and then they post them online for Instagram and Facebook and social media attention. Yep. The easy way to put it is, stand in front of camera, look good. Oh, I can do that. Most people can. It's even easier behind the camera. Yeah, you don't have to put on any makeup to be behind the camera. Nope. You just got to make sure to get everyone in the picture. Yeah, there are photographers that don't do that. Are you going to do a photo shoot? 
I am. I am actually running the has been photo shoot this afternoon. Oh, okay. Cool. But if you guys want us to demonstrate a photo shoot for you real quick, we can. Oh, sure. right. Come on, Nako, get up. Uh, why do you make me get up so much? Because you work for me. All right. So. Okay. So with photo shoots, if you're doing a group shoot, you're going to want to make sure you do it in grouping. You'll either want to start. Typically, I like to end with the entire group who showed up in one big group photo at the end, because then you have the most amount of people. You don't start with the group photo, unless you want to see how it grows throughout the time if it's a particularly long event, like a couple hours. Then you would do start finish photo. But you'll start with usually the characters, so. Usually the, the main character. Yes, yeah, so, Hasbin Hotel, Charlie. Hey. So, you would start with, let's have all the Charlies up. And the Charlies will come up, they'll pose, they'll be adorable. And then you'll be like, okay, be good. Check with the photographer, check with the models. Okay, let's have all the raggies. Run through your main cast first. And, and then- the Supporting characters. Supporting characters. And then you can get into, uh, I want to see these two characters together. I want to do shifting. I want to do action poses. Usually uh, that's when the host hostess will go. Okay, does anyone have any ship requests? Or if we have people, because I experienced this once, uh, we had some kids show up, and I'm like, does anyone want to take shippy photos? And the woman's child was all like, mommy, what's shipping? The woman was super mad at me. <laughs> to be fair, she shouldn't have brought her kid to it. It was, I don't remember what the photo was. Oh, it was, I think it was Overwatch. Diva and the Overwatch group. Yeah, so if you don't want to say that to avoid offending people, just be like, does anyone have any suggestions? I promise you somebody in your group is going to want to ship. We all have a horrible habit of doing it. Yep, everyone has their OTPs. Charlie and Alistair? <laughs> yes, Charlie So what is shipping? What, is, what, are, you, what are you talking about? Like, uh, you, know, you, you see like, a character, like say... Hang on, I got this. Right. Okay, so in Hasbin Hotel, the two main characters, Charlie and Baggy, are a canon couple. However, there are people in the fandom that may not like Baggy. Me being one of them, she does not have the best personality. So they look at other characters and like, I think this character would be so much better with this character and they should be in a relationship. And that's what shipping is. Shipping is things that may or may not be canon and you're putting them together in a relationship type stance. And it's always relationships, yes. I ship uh, Charlie and the Radio Demon. So do I, Charlister for the win. Yay. All right. All right, guys. So this has been How to Host a Photo Shoot. I'm Twilight Tempest Cosplay. I am Nico Rin Cosplay and Photography. And yeah, if you guys have any questions for us, you're more than welcome to always find us. I go to multiple conventions. And yeah, it's been great having you here all. Woo! It was a great con. Bye, guys! Yay!